Call me Mess and Zang cause I'm a flippy bands. Uh, bring your mess, bro. You see the title, bro. Uh, someone said they actually react to this. Uh, film me the video. I don't, I don't want to waste time with a long ass intro. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I'm new to this thing. I don't even know what the hell I'm la la bottom you is. Let's go, man. No wasting time. Warning this video will spoil the following for Lobotomy Corporation. This video is for those who want to play Library of Ruina, a card game, without 100% completing an extremely difficult management sim to get- Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, bro. My smooth brain head ass and my, uh, my low IQ heaven ass. Even though I got, I got glasses, it looks like I'm a nerd or something. I don't know, bro. Yeah, I'm just here for the video, for me. Let's see what's true. All of the context. For like, I'm trying to say that, uh, I'm not a fan of uh, card games. I'm a generic ass dude who likes uh, fighting games or something like that. I don't know, GTA. Story. I do recommend at least trying Lobotomy Corporation as it really is a one of a kind experience. However, if you've gotten this far, I imagine you've either tilted out or have already beaten the game and are just looking for a summary of the extremely scattered plot. If that's the case, watch on. Is it an anime or a game? I don't know. Okay, let me stop. Welcome to the city. It sucks here. In fact, it sucks so much that it seems like there might be something even worse going on here than normal levels of I just spent an hour on social media and want to unalive myself. One day, a woman named... <laughs> Oi! Okay? Oh, uh, okay. Carmen and her high-functioning boyfriend, A, decided to do something about it. They set up a lab in the outskirts of the city, outside of the attention of any of the big spooky corporations that control it, and started researching how to fix everything. They brought in a colorful cast of characters to help, including Elijah, a cute girl who's very determined to get stuff done, Gabriel, a thoughtful, rational young man who also wants to get stuff done, but in a more ordered way, Giovanni, an old friend of Carmen who is mostly just here to make sure she's alright, Michelle, a cute, upbeat girl, always ready with a smile and a supportive word, Enoch and Lisa, two kids found in the outskirts who were brought into the lab so they could be kept safe from the literal cannibalism that happens out there, Kali, a hero of the downtrodden who is easily the most bad ass mother in this entire list, Daniel, a prodigy who was brought into the project by Carmen, and Benjamin, A's best friend and right-hand man. The lab was a shockingly nice place full of people who thought they were working on a project to save the world. After a long while, they developed a substance known as Kajito that was capable of manifesting a human's mental state into the physical world. Hmm. However, they didn't know exactly what it was capable of doing without human testing. Safe to say that no one really wanted to get involved with unlicensed, unregulated human experimentation, at least- Uh... Okay, usually white people, like, not, not on some racing, racist things, bro, everybody knows this. Usually white people are the people that be like, 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 that like doing crazy things like bro they hear someone screaming like not even someone they hear something screaming over there they're like you know what let's go check it out my my dog i'm getting my black ass out of there what do you mean we're gonna check it out like i'm like i'm trying to say usually i would say why the hell would i be drinking a concoction i don't even know but they say it can give you powers I don't know, I, I might try new things, man. I might try new things. Until Enoch, the boy that came in with Lisa, volunteered. Apparently, living in a cannibalistic hellscape makes for a bad mental state, and he really just wanted to die in the one happy place he had ever known, so he okay. didn't really care about the I understand. He Understandable. Goes the experiment, but despite all expectations, everything goes well. His mental state produces a seed of- <gasps> Oh, fuck. Uh, he's like, oh, uh, I thought that was my chance of uh, deleting myself. What, well, down? Yay! The experiment what the experiment was successful. But damn, I wanted to yeah. Light representing the desperate <laughs> hope he had deep down that everything would go well. Seeing that, he comes to terms with his old desire to die and continues to live for the future. They use the seed to rain light upon the world, curing it of its perpetual funk. Human lives improve, the world is a brighter place, and a mm. giant library is constructed on the site of the lab where it all happened to serve as a reminder that through knowledge and perseverance. Humanity can overcome any hardship. Yeah, bro. Even though people be saying with knowledge or whatever, whatever, bro. As long as, like, I'm those type of people, like, bro, I forced myself to finish school, obviously. But after that, you feel me? Thank God or I can say I have the ability to do what I want to do, which is YouTube or, I don't know, not go to college or whatever. I know I'm going on a long run, but listen. I'm a person that don't like learning certain things just for learning them. Like, I, I'm not those type of people that be like, ah, oh, a human must have like a lot of information, this and that. No, bro. The only time I could study or learn something is if I'm interested in it. If not, or I'm forced, nah, bro. Me personally, bro, if in, nah, 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 hey, man. 
I'm not the correct person to call. Yo, bro, I found something new we could learn. Fuck out of here with that shit, bro. Just kidding, Enoch dies in absolute agony. Turns out, Kajito is a horribly corrosive substance when injected into a living being, but it did certainly succeed at manifesting the human subconscious. However, the human mind is a dark place, even darker in the city, and Kajito began manifesting creatures called abnormalities. Abnos oh. are essentially this universe's version of SCPs. They're a general category of supernatural entity or item. Some are useful, some are horrifying, some are mostly passive, but all of them are dangerous. These abnormalities are capable- Can you think of a bad bitch? <laughs> Hey, hey, man, I'm just saying, though, you, you already know, man. I go crazy. What the hell did I do? Potent source of power called Encephalion, which meant that in order to generate an actual seed of light, they needed more of them. However, Carmen was one of the nicest people around, so she wouldn't just approve of deadly human experimentation for the sake of her research. However, she's had a bit of a bad time. Carmen is overcome with grief from the fact that she painfully murdered a little boy, made even mm. worse by Lisa cursing her with every single word she spoke. Turns out, Enoch was the only thing keeping Lisa in any kind of normal mental state. Carmen then tries to unalive herself in Minecraft, only if she dies in the game, she dies in real life. A finds her in the bathtub she was playing Minecraft in, and instead of using the crazy advanced tech of the city to save her, he rips her brainstem out and sticks it in a jar. Determined Wait, huh? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Save her. He rips her brainstem out and sticks it in life. A finds her in the bathtub she was playing Minecraft in, and instead of using the crazy advanced tech of the city to save her, he rips her brainstem out and sticks it in a jar. Det okay. Determined to see her research through, A decides that no price is too high to get his wife's wish fulfilled. If you remember my previous comment about A being high-functioning, it's not high-functioning autism, it's sociopathic. A proceeds to continue experimenting with Kajito through a process called extraction. Using the giant tube that Carmen's brainstem has been stored in, they take a subject injected with Kajito and dip them into the ocean of human subconsciousness. Doing this, they are able to create a much wider variety of terrible, dangerous, and encephalian rich abnormalities. Absolutely broken by Carmen's death, Giovanni volunteered him for Kajito extraction, being convinced by A that it could bring Carmen back. It can't, and A tells him as much while Giovanni dies in the infirmary after the extraction, not even being used for making an abno. Elijah wanted A to participate more directly instead of hanging back and just watching everything happen. She decided to do just that, taking some Kajito that was definitely not ready to be safely used, and promptly died horribly while begging A to just put a bullet in her. <laughs> A refused. When Elijah died, that caused Gabriel to go from a well-meaning but stern man to an obsessive compulsive madman. He feared chemical exposure at the lab and would scratch at any exposed part of his skin. This eventually killed him, but not until much later. Things came to a head when that sweet little bean named Michelle revealed herself as a rat. She made contact with the head, aka the ruling body of a city. They freaked the f*** out and sent one of their biggest and scariest agents in to kill everyone in the lab and stomp out the research. This agent was Garion, an arbiter who is one of the scariest motherfuckers in the entire setting. She single-handedly rolled up to the lab and started decimating everything. She accosted Daniel, who was in charge of the Abnos in captivity, and threatened him to let them out or she'd kill him and do it herself. He decided to let them out, but took a bit of time to do it to give the employees and his friends time to escape. This proved to be in vain since they all died horribly anyway. His nah. guilt over this decision eventually kills him. The Abnos proceeded to kill huge swaths of nameless mooks and Lisa, although Kali manages to kill most of the Abnos in response. Eventually, Kali met Garion in combat. Garion ripped off- Bro, this will be a great ass enemy, bro, if I had an enemy. I don't know. I'm an anime dude, bro. I'm an anime dude. I'm not really into the manga or like- Cause it looks like a- Wait, it, it's a game or what? I don't know. Like this, these games was is like not animated. It's just like pictures, like it, cause it looks like this a game or something. Cause it's talking about game card, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Hey, bro, if you see this video and you wanted me to react to it, bro, hey, you picked the wrong nigga to react to these type of videos where like you gotta be focused or you gotta, for me, pick up like when he say certain information, you gotta keep it so you can understand what the hell, hell what the hell happens in the future, bro. I'm a Feel me? I'm a generic, simple guy who reacts to like simple, comprehensible uh, type of things. But I can say, I, okay, I'm still hooked on whatever the hell. What the hell? I'm still hooked on whatever the hell is going on here. Kali's arm, but couldn't kill her before she impaled Garion. With the abnos suppressed and Garion impaled and helpless, A proceeded to torture her and extract her brain. With it, he learned about the inner workings of the head and how he could stay out of their sight. The only way to do so would be to become a wing of the world. Okay, time for some world building. Wings are basically mega corporations that control a district of the city. There are 25 of them, one for each letter of the alphabet except Z, which is represented by the outskirts. They all have a nest, which is the nice section of the city under the direct control of the 
the wing, and to back streets, the rest of the city where life is a lot harder and significantly more brutal. They mm. all also own a singularity, some kind of super advanced technology which allows them to produce something that the city needs. To quickly give an example, R Corp is a wing that you actually come into contact with during Lobotomy Corp. They specialize in extremely powerful mercenary groups. The exact nature of their singularity is unknown, but they're basically the city's military wing. All wings are extremely powerful, capable of mass destruction on a large scale on top of their gargantuan economic might. Due to this, the head can't directly mess with a wing the way they did with the lab, because a conflict between wings would be catastrophic for the city. A decides that the only way he could get access to a wing is to take over one that currently exists. He sets his sight on L Corp, the power production wing of the city. He and Benjamin make some shady backroom deals with R Corp to get the support needed to take on a whole ass wing. Not much is known about the specifics of this conflict, which would be known as the Smoke War, but it's theorized that Benjamin basically said, Hey R Corp, we can produce way more power than the current L Corp. If you help us take over, we'll give you extremely generous contracts so you won't ever have to worry about the power bill again. Presumably R Corp took this deal and A's group won the war. With the new L Corp in place, A decided to dub it Lobotomy Corporation, and so the titular organization was formed. However, we missed something important. At some point during these events, it's not clear if it's actually before the war, after it, or even during it, A broke one of the most important rules of the city. You see, while A might have been a sadistic, abusive monster of a man, he still had this pesky thing called an emotional attachment. As such, he was pretty sad that Carmen was gone. He decided to try and recreate her by making an artificial intelligence. He what the f <laughs> Bro, what the hell did freak out boy got going on? Bro, let her die, man. What? Oh, wait, he still got this. I don't know, the brain, whatever. I don't know what the hell they call this, man. Bro! Oh, well, I, bro. This is the worst thing I could hate about like I like I love technology, but here's the worst thing I could hate. In the future, as technology advances, people can end up like lose like obviously you lose a person, or whatever you I don't know, you lose a person, then instead of letting that person die and rest in peace, you create a clone of that person. Like, bro, come on, man. Understandable, she was giving you the best slops or coochie, whatever, but come on, bro, let her die. He scanned Carmen's brainstem and used hey, it what? as the base for the AI. When this purely mechanical AI... Like, it's just weird, bro. Everybody literally buried that person. And then two minutes later, the people who went to the funeral, like, they see you with that person. Bro, didn't we bury her? Who the hell is that? Or is, oh, that she... Did she had a twin or some shit? Then you say, nah, I, I cloned her. In her eyes, she was designed to be the perfect assistant. She perceived things 1,000 times faster than the average human, so she could react at superhuman speeds, and had perfect recall of everything she witnessed, so she would never forget a detail. She even had complete human emotions, giving her a sense of empathy, so she- This man gave her bigger t- <laughs> What is going on? This man gave her bigger- you know what I'm talking about, bro. She can more properly assist those around her. And the first thing A did when he saw this absolute masterwork of a creation is reject her. She was not Carmen. She was some new mechanical thing that looked just enough like Carmen to drive a spike of ice right through A's heart. He didn't even want to name her, but Benjamin convinced him. So, Angela was born. A then proceeded to make a plan to see Carmen's research succeed. The end goal was to make something called a Seed of Light, charge it with Enkephalion, and release the light over the world for seven days, which would cure this mass depression the world was afflicted with. However, making a Seed of Light would require much work, including a lot of abnormalities. However, abnormalities are dangerous to contain, and the chances of actually succeeding in generating that much power were nearly impossible. So, utilizing advanced technology, A set up a 50-day time loop. This would allow him effectively infinite resources to throw at the problem and infinite chances to get things right. But it mm. wasn't as easy as just setting up the time loop. No, A wrote a script for this play that he was putting on. There were steps that would be followed, events that had to happen, and goals that must be met in order to ensure that the seed of light was properly raised. Part of this was the creation of the Sapphira, semi-artificial intelligences that would each control one of the nine departments in Lobotomy Corporation. I say semi-artificial because they're not completely mechanical like Angela. They are yeah. instead the brains of the previously dead characters we've talked Ooh. about thus far, all stuck into robotic bodies with most of their memory systems. Press. Next, A decided to use another powerful piece of tech to split himself into five different individuals. Abel, Abraham, Adam, Aion, and X. X would be a mind-wiped version of A, who would serve as the director of the facility during the play, and also as the character that the player controls during the game. Abel, Abram, and Adam would serve as the final challenges for X to see if A could overcome his own personal demons, with mm. Aion being the final and true version of A that would then spill the beans about the seed and all of his plans. Each of the challenge A's represented a different aspect aspect of his personality. Abel is a sharply dressed man representing his own guilt over the atrocities he's committed while being in charge of the facilities. Abram is the 
Ramsey's guilt and despair over Carmen's death made manifest, who wants to do nothing but die next to the remains of his beloved. Man, stop crying like a little bitch, man. Move on, man. Damn. Finally, Adam serves as the final boss of the game and is the perversion of his mind after being exposed to so many abnormalities. With everything in place and Angela at his side, he started the 50-day time loop and Lobotomy Corporation truly begins. Mm. Most of the game is spent uncovering all the craziness we just discussed, but a few important things need to be addressed. B is a faceless person who starts sending you messages not to trust Angela early on. She responds by telling you not to trust B. It turns out B is Benjamin who gets captured and turned into a Sapphira sometime around day 20. It double turns out this was all part of the plan that A made, so he basically sacrificed his gay best friend for the sake of having one more Sapphira to complete his plan with the seed. Also, e I'm sorry, but gay best friend or what the hell going Man, he just popped like he just he just said it like that like I already know he's gay best friend. Like there's no like bro, it's not like I'm I'm confused. Like he just said I don't know. He could just say his his friend, I don't know. It's like how to put this. His black friend. Why you gotta say black, bro? Like, and then for like I don't know, bro. I don't, because I don't know nothing about this lobotomy, this and that for me. I'm new to this thing. Someone just said react to it. I'm providing the reaction. So it's like what? Each of the Sapphira now go by a new name after being shoved into brain holding clap traps. Elijah is Malkuth, Gabriel is Yesid, Giovanni is Netzach, Michelle this is, is crazy, Hod, bro. Enoch and Lisa are Tipereth A and B, Kali is Gebera, David is Chesed, Benjamin is Hokma, and Garion is Bina. Each of the Sapphira slowly begins to remember sure. their previous lives over the course of the game. This I'm not gonna lie, bro. That boy has, has to, for me, get a... I don't know if I can say this on YouTube. Bro, he gotta suffer, bro. Like, bro. If I were to be removed or whatever, it would me sleep forever. Bro, just leave my brain out of this. Do not put me in a goofy contraption. Like, come on, bro. Let my brains die or whatever. It causes them to inevitably undergo a meltdown, which is a major crisis that you have to adapt to. Afterwards, they each come to terms with the absolute mess. Just imagine seeing this goofball putting your brain into a robot without your permission. As a person. Each time this happens, the seed of light grows just a bit. Okay, we're gonna rapid fire the character development of each Sapphira. Try to keep up, and I'm sorry if I don't do your favorite one justice. This script is long enough. As yeah, I don't know nothing about that. previous gung-ho attitude was mostly just a facade. She doesn't actually think you can do anything to improve the hellish situation that the facility finds itself in, but after her meltdown is intrigued enough by your tenacity to keep going, that she'll continue to support you if nothing more than just to see what happens. Yes, it comes to term with the fact that Elijah died and he can't go back and change that. He also sees the player going through that same process and encourages them to see it through and change for the better despite the pain. Netzok hates his job as a Sapphira, constantly getting drunk and high, doing his best to escape from the cruel reality he has to endure. This climaxes with his attempting to commit suicide, which you prevent because Sapphira needs permission to die. Over time, he comes to terms with this situation, acknowledging that if he can't get out, he might as well hold on to some hope for the future and stops resenting X for trying to save him. Odds Ark reveals that her bubbly and supportive personality is all a facade to try and make up for the fact that she got everyone killed. She doesn't believe that she's actually awkwardly nice, she thinks that she's just acting to get over her massive guilt. After her meltdown and recovery, she stops denying that she actually feels these positive emotions towards people and starts showing a more genuine form of kindness. The Tiferes are a bit more complicated. See, they're Enoch and Lisa, both trapped in a hell that neither one of them wishes to endure. Due to Enoch being by far the most deteriorated brain put into a Sapphira, and the fact that he's been denied the death he wanted and actually got, he's extremely unstable. This results in him being stuck in a loop of deteriorating over time until he eventually cracks and needs to be reset. Tiff's meltdown involves the player no takes these back, he's actually killing Enoch to ensure that he can rest in peace. After Enoch is permakilled, Lisa warms up a bit, now much more amicable after you give Enoch his well-deserved rest. Gebra as a Sapphira is extremely violent toward abnormalities due to the way that she died. She doesn't remember being Kali, hero of the backstreet, she only remembers that she fights abnormalities. She also gives the player access to the Rabbits, a group of mercenaries from Arkorp who will go in and kill everything that lives in the department of your choice, at least most of the time. Sometimes even they can't handle the monsters you're trying to kill. Geb's suppression involves fighting her while she's going all out. After that, she regains a lot of her old self, no longer just being a ball of rage and violence, but the same protector that she was before. Chesed spends his time- My brain is about to explode, bro. Bagarian. He comes to terms with it in the end, accepting that while he might not be able to deal with fear in the future, he will at least no longer run away from it. Finally, we have Hokma and Bina. Hokma is the freshly made Sapphire of Benjamin and mostly remembers himself. His arc ends with him once again stating his desire to follow A into the future, maybe less blindly now, but still determined to see things through to the end. Bina is the Arbiter Garion who was sent to kill the entirety of the lab. She naturally doesn't like anyone that much since she was never really supposed to be here to begin with. Her suppression results in her still not being a fan of most of what's going on, but she's at least going to watch and not turn away from what's happening in the facility. You also have to fight her and it's easily one of the most difficult brawls in the entire game. As each
huge meltdown happens and is resolved, it becomes more and more apparent that all Oof. of this was part of A's play. Fine, he wrote I can happy breathe. endings for each of the people in his life that he had wronged and for himself. X fights against his inner demons of Abel, Abram, and Adam, conquering them and growing as a person himself. This outpouring of character growth combined with the Encephalion causes the seed of light to grow, eventually bursting into a giant explosion of light raining over the entire city when you beat Adam. As the light explodes out of the facility and begins shining over the city, all of the Sapphira meet in the basement where A stands before the Pillar of Light. While they may not love him, they no longer hate him as they did. So they say their farewells as he steps into the Nigga, fuck that nigga to a grave, nigga. What the fuck? Hell no. Light and fades away. Well, they are robots. Well, they're not the real, the real ones, so I don't care. So the Sapphira stand there at the end, watching the light wash over the city, covering all things in its warm and hopeful glow. They understand that everything will be alright, their work is finally done after so much pain and suffering. They'll be deactivated, but the world will turn on without them, a better place. <laughs> okay, looks like the video is done. I don't know, bro. If this that... Wait, dog, I'm gonna see this. If you see this video... I'm not gonna lie, if this is not the reaction that you wanted, bro, hey man, you see me, I don't be reacting to like, uh, like complicated things or whatever, bro, I just, plus I don't be doing a lot, or I don't know whether, I thought this was like an anime type of thing, I don't know, because it looked like an anime, but hey. Damn, eat damn. But that's not where our story ends. A hmm? planned for so damn much, took so many precautions, measures, made everything happen just right, but even he still had a blind spot. See, A forgot someone. Who? The same person he always forgot. Just as everything looks like it's going to turn out all right, just as the sacrifice and hardships and suffering has finally resulted in the good that everyone had worked towards being done, Angela smiles. She says that A was a fool. He did everything he could to make sure Angela suffered, and just assumed that she was a meek little robot who would do whatever he said. She says that she has suffered more than anyone else, forced to remember the millions of years worth of experiences across an insane number of 50 day time loops, all experienced a thousand times slower than they actually were. She Dang. says that she was never given a chance at life, and now that her commands from A are finished, she can do whatever the fuck she wants to. And I just, if I was him, I just pull, I just pull out a little button and I'm like, fuck no, nigga. Then it like, it, like it's a detonator or something. <laughs> and she wants to live. <laughs> to see what the world is like beyond the confines of the cells that she's been kept in for her entire existence. She's owed that much by the man who made her and then so callously disregarded her. Damn the price and damn the world. So she takes the light and hides it away. After three days of the light shining on the city, it vanishes, and the world is covered with darkness for four days. The seeds of light that should have fixed everything were feeble and mm. unstable. This week became known as the White Nights and Dark Days. Angela, now free, turns the facility into a great library. From there, she sets out to collect knowledge about the world, store it, and eventually obtain one singular, perfect book. And that is where our story truly begins. Welcome to the Library of Ruina. May you find your book in this place. The fuck? Why did man end it like it's some like evil shit like be warned or something? Like the hey, way you if did. you want to see how this story continues, I'm streaming Library of Ruin on my Twitch every Wednesday and Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. EST. If yeah, bro, I'm going to be dog. Hey, man. If this the direction that you wanted or this not the direction that you wanted, my bad, big dog. I'm not really into like the whole like... Like, I don't be reacting to, like, gaming videos or, like, anything like that it involves, like, gaming. I, don't, I mainly react to, like, I don't know, normal things. Like, anime, recaps, and, like, yeah, funny videos. But I'm gone, bro. I got a lot of things to do. Call me Master Sang, cause I'm a flitty bass.